What's going on guys, Ryan with Jetta Patrol back with another video today. Well, actually yesterday we unboxed this guy, did a whole video on that, check that video out here. Today, Incinerator Trooper. That's right guys, Ryan back with another video today. We got another Hot Toys unboxing and review. If you didn't check out the video I did on the unboxing and review of the Hot Toys Mandalorian TMS-007, uh, I would recommend you do that. I think it's a fantastic figure. Uh, I do have, I do have for those wondering, I do have a posing video coming specifically for this guy. So uh, if you're interested in figuring out how to pose and how to maneuver uh, your Hot Toys Mandalorian, um, you know, maybe some tips and tricks. Uh, stay tuned for that. So I've got that figure there. I also have incinerator, uh, incinerator trooper. I almost said incendiary. I read that on a post somewhere. It's like incendiary. It's incinerator trooper. Um, but I, I've got that one here. This is TMS 012. So I've got this one. I also have on deck, just, just for fun, for comparison and whatnot, I also have uh, the remnant trooper, which I do have two of. Uh, the second one's on the way, uh, so this figure's awesome. And I also have another figure we're gonna compare it to, but first, you know what, I was just thinking, I was just, I, I should, probably should've done this. Way back here, I've got my Incinerator Trooper helmet uh, from the Black Series, look at this thing. This thing, whoo, man, look. Oh, anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling. So let me put, let me put him back there. All right, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and unbox this guy, you ready? Let's do it. Here we go, guys. Here is the box of the Incinerator Trooper Mando. I'm going to ask you to step to the side for just a second. You can come over and hang out with these guys. Uh, check out the box art on this guy. TMS-012. Looking mighty fine right there. On the side, we got a figure, uh, photo of the actual figure. On the back, we got all the whodunits. So that's pretty awesome right there. And then uh, on the side here, we got TMS-012 uh, Incinerator Trooper. Six-scale collectible figure. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. I have taken the liberty of getting the plastic off of the figure to save us some time on that. Uh, but here is the box insert art. This thing looks flipping amazing. Ooh, okay, so let's go ahead and get into this, guys. There's uh, there's that for those who are interested. Uh, it looks pretty good. I, 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 fun, fun thing to do, if you want. Occasionally what I'll do is I'll break out the boxes on these things and I'll, di I'll display them. I'll just I'll show you like this. I'll literally display them like this. Uh, with the figure, so you know, randomly I just kind of change it up. Uh, but anyways, there's the side note. I wanted to share that with you. All right, here we go, guys. We do have some hands. We're gonna take that out of here, and let's go ahead and uh, get the. Well, let's just take the whole flipping thing out of there. There we go. There's the box, and uh, here's our plastic container. First impressions, this thing is looking mighty fine. I'm pretty happy with this thing. I was able to get the little plastic bits off of there, but here's what he comes with, which is honestly not a lot. It doesn't come with a whole lot, but that's okay because what he does come with matters. So first off, we've got this uh, tank backpack thing. We're gonna take a look at that in a second. We've got his actual flamethrower blaster. We got that. We've got a blast effect. Let's go ahead and get all this stuff out of the packaging. We have some extra bits and bobs here. We have some hoses. And we have the figure itself. And uh, down here we have the display stand, which I've got to say, I, I just, I got to say, I like it way, way better than the one that came with the Mandalorian. I, I know it might be not like screen accurate or whatever, but the, I just, I like that way better. So let's go ahead. Hey, get over there. Get over there. Let's take a look at the hands that he comes with. And uh, on the figure itself, he's got two open uh, hands. Uh, which are just normal hands. Let's go from here. And inside here, I don't even know what we got. Let's find out. We got two fist hands. Here. Boom. There we go. That's how we do it. We got two fist hands. We got two blaster hands and a waving hand. So let's just go ahead and take a look. I tell you, what, let's just take a look at this hand right here. So here is the hand right here. Look at the paint apps, the little scuffs and paint marks going on there. That looks pretty good. I'm okay with that. It's a normal hand. I don't think there's anything super exciting to deal with here. This is definitely not like, if you remember the unboxing I did with the Hot Toys Han Solo Deluxe and all those cool hands with the gloves and the textures and everything on it. These are just normal Stormtrooper hands. There's really nothing to write home about. There's some padding and stuff in there, but they're black gloves and they've got some paint apps on the hands and there's that. So there's uh, super exciting there. Now, the actual 
blaster flamethrower rifle thing. Uh, I expected, I gotta throw this out there, I expected a lot more paint apps on this. This, I, I'm a little disappointed in this. This should have more paint detail. There's just not a whole lot of paint apps going on with this thing. Here's the stock that actually slides back, the bump stock, there we go. Um, this thing right here, this should have some bluing going on here where it's been used. Uh, I'm just, I don't know, the, the design is okay, but the paint apps for me are definitely lacking. They're definitely lacking. So, I, you know, not Hot Toys' best effort on, uh, on paint apps there. It's, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I gotta be honest, guys. I mean, they're not all home runs, you know what I mean? Uh, that right there, not enough to not buy the figure, like not enough to stop me from enjoying the figure. I just think they've done a better job on, on some. Like if you look at uh, Mando's rifle, Mando's rifle, they did a fantastic job with all the little different colors. If you look at uh, even, well, we'll get there in a second. I'm going on a tangent. Not 100% happy with that. Here is the uh, fire effect. This, I think, is fantastic. And normally, I do not display my figures with these little effects. Like if you saw like the Star Wars um, lightning effect, the force lightning, like those things, I'm not a big fan of. This, I actually might consider using. It's got three little prongs down here where it actually connects to the, uh, to the blaster. I might consider using this. Maybe, maybe. I don't know, things like this. I know you guys might disagree, but you can let me know in the comment section down below. But I, I like that they include these. I like they include these. But these feel like a toy. Like, I, like for example, I've got uh, the Mandalorian light uh, blaster bolt effect thing going on here. This right here feels like a toy, okay? And by the way, if you wanna keep all your accessories together, Ziploc bags are 100% the best way to do it. Uh, and I will uh, actually label this when I put it where it needs to go. But these, this one's better. This one's better, okay? Uh, here we do have the tank, the backpack. I really kind of like this one. I guess I just kind of contradicted myself. I really kind of like, I do like this. I do think there should be some more paint apps going on with this, but we do have some decent paint apps. It's just flat. It's just flat. I mean, look right here. It's just not a whole lot going on there. The back detail, I think is pretty nice. Uh, they absolutely could have just made that one flat piece and nobody's gonna look at, but they didn't. So they've got all the little inserts and cutouts and whatnot on that. So I really like that they took the time to do that. And um, I, I like the red and the black. I think it looks pretty freaking good. So I'm a big fan of that. These look like they're gonna be fairly straightforward to put over the figure. I imagine we're gonna take the head off and uh, throw the arms back and uh, just throw these over the shoulders. So I imagine that's gonna be quite simple. And then we have some hoses that are quite bendy. Like there's no issues there. I don't think you're gonna have any issues with these like dry rotting or anything. I think these are gonna be pretty solid. Uh, so we've got that. The actual figure itself, before we go ahead and put on the uh, the backpack and everything, there there's some there's some there's some things. There's some things. Let's take a look at it. Let's look at the paint apps first. Paint apps look pretty good. Uh, the weathering, I think they could have done a little bit more weathering. The pauldron here looks pretty good. I kind of dig that. It's definitely a bright bright red that matches the uh, the paint apps there but uh there's some issues with helmets uh figures with helmets and pauldrons which we'll look at here in just a little bit uh but the paint apps i think they did a pretty good job on i think it could be more but you know i just think it could be a little bit more weathered maybe that's where i'm going from when i look at the remnant trooper uh and then i compare this and even some other troopers i've got the weathering on this guy is not not a whole lot. Like there should be, like down here, there should be like dirt and grime and stuff going on here. There's some, but nowhere near, nowhere near what you would expect uh, from a figure. Cause you remember when this guy walked, when this guy walked on screen, he was total badass. He was just, he was just ready to go and he was awesome. And you could tell he had been sitting in the back row just waiting to be called and it was his turn and he was ready to go. He'd been, he'd been there before, right? This particular paint apps on this one, while there are some weathering in the, in the creases and folds of the armor, it needed more. It really needed more. So maybe you're good with uh, a like super clean, oh, that, like I said, there is, some, there is some dirt, there is some grime, right? There is some down here and there is some down here on the boot. I just think it could have been more. And uh, so I, want, I'm, I just wanted a little more from that. So you might be saying, well, why are you whining about it? Because it's a $275 figure. So yeah, that's why. <laughs> 
Now, uh, it definitely has the same, for those who will be wondering on articulation and range of motion, uh, it definitely has the same uh, undersuit like we saw with the Remnant Trooper or any Rogue One style trooper, other than the Death Trooper. The Death Trooper with that rubber undersuit, I completely hate that thing, but uh, this has that, uh, that cloth undersuit. So I don't think there's gonna be any issues with uh, range of motion on the upper body. The lower body, you're always gonna have issues with, uh, with troopers, especially going forward because of the crotch plates and whatnot. Uh, but before we go ahead and throw on the backpack and everything, let's just see what it will do and see what kind of posing options we got with this. So on the elbows, looks like we're gonna have, I'll see if we can do this. If I can get this, oh look, we're already running into something here. So if you are, uh, wanna know something, you can actually rotate these a little bit and then get a little bit more bend. So if you take this and rotate this in, you can get a little bit more bend out of it just like that. So you can cheat it a little bit and that's how you would do that. So it's a double bend elbows, that's, that's not bad. Uh, not bad at all. You just kind of kind of mess with it. Uh, the yeah, I like this. So these shoulder armor, the pauldrons here, uh, is actually on an elastic strap. So I think we're going to be able to get a decent range. Yeah, we'll be able to get that guy out of the way and get that arm up. So let's see if I can do this without breaking my figure before I even put it together. Can we do that? Yeah. So I think if we really wanted to push it, we could get it a little bit higher than that. But that's not uh, that's not terrible. It's not terrible for a trooper. It's not terrible. I do like that that's on elastic strap, so you can get that out of the way. This one you're gonna have a whole lot more problem with because of this the pauldron. It's just a thing. So there's that is what it is. Uh, rotation on the uh, torso, normal Rogue One style uh, torso twist right here. You're gonna hit some uh, rubbing going on here. That's okay. These guys weren't super articulated to begin with. Uh, leg wise, let's see how far we can get this thing to go forward. Wow, I'm actually that's I'm actually impressed by that, guys. I really am, especially with this armor being the way it is. Um, I'm actually impressed that it went that high. I, I expected like more like that. So up there, that's that's pretty good. Uh, knees, we're gonna get. It do have double jointed knees, but you're gonna run into uh, you're gonna run into armor hitting there. So uh, you're gonna get about 90 degrees. So that's okay. And then uh, the foot is on a ball joint. You can pretty much do whatever you want there. Uh, so that's not terrible. Not terrible at all. So normal for a Stormtrooper, I still think the um, the most fun figure to pose as far as Stormtroopers go uh, is the Return of the Jedi uh, Stormtrooper, which I have, I have up there. Just I have a couple of those guys. Those are so much fun to pose. There's almost no limit to what those things can do. It is, they're super fun. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, put this backpack on this fellow. We'll just figure this out together, okay? So I imagine the head's gonna have to come off and the uh, pauldron's gonna have to come off. Yep, there's that. Head off. Pauldron's gonna have to come off and the pauldron is attached by a little bungee here. So I imagine that's gonna have to come all the way off the figure. So probably like that. And uh, we got a backpack to go on. So let's see here. We have hoses. Let's go this way. All right, yep. Anytime you're putting on a backpack or a shirt or anything on it, it's best to get the arms going backwards, which I should have done before I started this. But uh, we're making videos, that's how we do it. So let's just, uh, let's just make this go. All right, now the question is, yeah, it definitely goes that way. I wanna make sure I didn't put on upside down. Everybody in YouTube land is gonna be going, that's upside down, you idiot. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so we got some straps going on. Not bad, not bad. Got that. All right, guys, let's take a closer look at this guy. Check out that helmet. And uh, again, the paint app's pretty good on the red stripes. I kind of dig those. Uh, but going down to the weathering, you can see there's not, not a whole lot going on there and definitely not a whole lot going on uh, on the feet, which is, I don't know, you expect to see like ash or, you know, you know burnt items going on with here uh, being... You know the the trooper that he is but there it is it does look pretty good though um, but there it is just a simple pose uh kind of dig that one this is a museum pose you could absolutely rock for a very long time if you don't want to go anything more dynamic uh, but we'll, we'll see what we can do with this guy but i just wanted to kind of to see what it looked like posed up with the uh with the backpack so 
Backpack's a little fiddly, so I want to just, uh, before I knock this guy over, let me kind of rotate this guy around. Uh, if he can do it and not fall over, that'd be amazing. Okay, so I'm doing this handheld, so bear with me. Backpack is a little fiddly, so you're going to have these straps that are underneath uh, right about here. Definitely, when you are tightening those to get the desired uh, effect on the how it falls on the back, definitely hold on to the clasp. Don't just pull onto the, uh, the strap because you will break those straps. I've done it in the past and uh, you don't really want to do that. So be careful with that. But it does, uh, it does sit a little weird if you don't tighten those straps and you want to take a minute to get them as even as you can uh, on the left and the right. But check out those tanks. Absolutely looking fantastic. And I really, I really quite like those. I wish there was a little more weathering. You know, I wish there was a little more weathering going on, but uh, you know, I, I'm not upset with this one at all. The helmet is pretty, pretty clean. If we rotate this guy over even more, I do have the hoses attached. Let's see if we can do this without him falling over because I don't have them on the stand. Uh, if we got the hoses attached. They attach right there. There's actually uh, two hoses attached there. And then the other ones simply attach right into that little spot right there on the right above the uh, the wrist on the actual blaster, and they are moldable, posable. You I mean you're not there's not wires in them where you can, you know, get them to go exactly where you want. So they look a little weird, but um, don't hate that. That's okay. I uh, love the uh, Imperial logo going on right there, and I think everything about this guy is looking pretty good. But what I want to do is I'm going to break out a couple extra figures and do a little quick comparison for you guys. So that's not a terrible lineup, I don't think. So we've got the new Incinerator Trooper on the far right, the Shock Trooper from Battlefront uh, on the middle, uh, Remedy Trooper, and for good measure, I brought in a Death Trooper Specialist from Rogue One because, you know, uh, it's just freaking awesome. And uh, word on the street is we're going to be getting the new Death Trooper from The Mandalorian very soon. So, uh, you know, stay if you got that thing up for pre-order, definitely uh, get hyped and get ready to pay those uh, payments off if you haven't already. Uh, this is the Death Trooper Specialist. He's got a lot more gear than uh, what we're going to get from the Mandalorian. Although, you know, maybe we'll get a, a reissue of the Specialist Deluxe and have all kinds of cool stuff. But there he is. I want to kind of give you a size comparison. Just right off the bat, you can see he's a good bit. He's a good, he's a good half inch taller than the, the regular uh, other Trooper. So... These two guys, let's take a look at these two. So we've got Incinerator Trooper on the right, Shock Trooper on the left. And I want to give you guys a deep look at the difference in the paint app. So the Shock Trooper, look at the, look at the weathering going on this guy. This guy is definitely not uh, as stark and clean white as that guy. You can see the major difference between the two. So they're going to look good on the shelf next to each other. But clearly, this guy has been through, uh, you know, maybe a little more battles, a little more travels on his... Uh, you know, guard duty and whatnot, but there he is right there, uh, right next to uh, the, the uh, incinerator trooper. Check out this, he's got the uh, weathered pants with all red boots because he is styling and profiling uh, versus <laughs> this guy right here. So they look pretty good. And then I went ahead for good measure and added the remnant trooper in there because honestly, this, this is the paint apps, like this weathering right here, Maybe not to this scale. I mean, that might be a bit strong for what I was thinking, but maybe like 30% of this, 40% of this should have been over here on this guy. Regardless, it looks fantastic. Now, this guy is currently shipping at Sideshow Collectibles. If you want to pre-order this, or actually, you don't have to pre-order. It's shipping. Buy it. There's a link down below. If you use the link below, it does help out the channel. Uh, so uh, thank you for anybody who actually purchased this stuff from Sideshow uh, and used my link. That's awesome. But this guy right here, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm, I mean, just right off the bat, as you can see, I'm a big fan of Stormtroopers. I've got piles and piles and piles of them. In fact, I'm probably going to do like an entire Stormtrooper collection video at some point. And uh, we'll just kind of do a little comparison. If you guys would be interested in that, let me know. But right off the bat, guys, I mean, just look at these guys. Look absolutely Fantastic. If you pick this guy up, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. If this review uh, helped you make a decision one way or the other, let me know that as well. I know there's a lot of people on the fence with this guy. I I believe, and I have no inside knowledge of this, guys, but I believe this is going to be a limited production run figure. And I think once it sells out, people are going to be kicking themselves just like they do with the Shock Trooper. And, of course, with the, uh, the Remnant Trooper, which is now waitlisted at Sideshow, people are really... You know they're wishing they bought more so i'm happy i got two of them pretty pretty stoked about that um you know one shock trooper i think's probably enough one incinerator trooper is enough but zero if you missed out you know 
sorry for you. But guys, if you haven't already joined the Facebook group, please do so. Link down below. And as always, collect what you like. See you next time.